Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 25. When most people press the shutter button on their camera, they expect the picture to be taken instantaneously. However, that's an oversimplification. That's kind of like, let's say, Newtonian physics. Uh, Newton came up with a calculus and a couple very simple uh, rules that describe our physical world. And that works most of the time, but it kind of breaks down when things start moving really fast or when things need to be really accurate. When these things happen, you need to start taking into account more complicated laws like Einstein's special relativity. In the same way with cameras, when, you start, when things start moving really quickly or, or happening at a certain moment in time for high-speed photography, you no longer can rely on the fact that the picture will be taken instantaneously. You have to start uh, accounting for things like shutter lag and uh, the duration that the shutter is actually open and sometimes compensating for those facts by using things like uh, external flashes that will help uh, breeze motion uh, that's happening extraordinarily quickly. Most people are familiar with this phenomenon when they try to take a picture with their camera phone where the autofocus or the shutter lag is, is really bad on those cameras. Uh, but it does affect even these high-end DSLR cameras just to a lesser extent. But it matters greatly when you're doing really high-speed photography. I've gone into great detail about shutter lag and flash duration in other videos, and I'll put links to those in the show notes for this episode for those who want more de information and details. But the point of this episode is just to make people aware of these concepts and that you have to adjust uh, your uh, photography to account for these things so that people don't have to uh, get into the details to really understand that. So the real purpose of this video can be summarized into one really simple concept. It's that the shutter lag from a camera is about a thousand times longer than the duration of a flash, and a flash has no lag. So when you want to take that high speed shot, you can't rely on shutter lag, you can't rely on your shutter. You, you have to somehow use the flash instead. And the way people typically do that is they'll set up the camera in a dark room and set the uh, shutter to either bulb mode or to you know a long period of time like five seconds and then if you just take a picture it'll be black and nothing will be lit but then you use the flash during that period while the shutter is open to actually capture the event that you're trying to uh, take a picture of and that will light the scene at the instant that you want the uh, photo to be taken and, and that's you know that that's how people do those really amazing high-speed photography shots so at this point people usually nod their heads and say yeah I understand shutter lag is a problem but you know probably for my case it's okay and then I get the email or the post on my forum of somebody asking me well why, why didn't my case work so I wanted to throw a little bit of math out there so that people sort of can calculate on their own whether their use case uh, is going to work with the shutter lag or not. Um, if you don't like math, you can just experiment. And if shutter lag is um, too much of a problem, then you can go to using a flash. So what we've got here is the baseball example. And let's say you've got a professional pitcher throwing the ball at 90 miles per hour. Now I want to convert that into... Uh, feet per second, so I'm going to multiply that by one hour over 3600 seconds. Now we're in miles per second, and then I'm going to multiply that by 5280 feet per mile to get it into feet per second. And then the typical shutter lag is around 100 milliseconds or a tenth of a second, so I multiply by that, and I get this 13 feet per 100 milliseconds, which basically means that the baseball is going to travel 13 feet during your shutter lag. That's a long ways. And the problem gets way worse if you're photographing a bullet, right? Because a bullet's practically, you know, 10 times or more the speed of that baseball. So now you're talking about 130 feet. Even if you discount the shutter lag and just go with uh, shutter speed, then what you've got 
is, you, let's say your shutter can go at one millisecond, um, or a shutter speed of one one thousandth of a second. Uh, that would be 0.13 feet, which is, you know, over an inch of blur on that baseball, which should, you know, be a problem in certain cases as well. So what you really need to freeze the motion of the baseball and, be, and to be able to predictably place the baseball in the scene is to use a flash. So that's just an example of, of where you need to take into account shutter lag, uh, shutter duration, and things like that, and how you can sort of calculate whether it would be a problem for your use case. Thanks for watching.